In this presentation I'd like to give an update of the current status of the LibreOffice GTK4 port. And the first thing I'd like to do is go So here we have our demo of the GTK4 version. Uh, we can clearly see something on screen and it looks like LibreOffice should. Uh, if we look at the menus, we see we have functioning menus. Here we can see that the menu is too tall to fit in the available space. We now have scrollable menus with a scroll bar in the side. Uh, the classic first dialog to look at is the word count dialog. Uh, here we can see that the buttons have now migrated to the top of the window instead of the classic at the bottom. Uh, all of the help buttons are now replaced by this little indicator instead. The other classic dialog is insert manual break. Here again the same top uh, level buttons and here's an example of a combo box with a drop down menu working and if we enable that we have a functioning spin button there like that. Uh, look at more ones. If we insert table, select a more complicated dialog. Here we have our tree view down here functioning perfectly fine and preview is updated as we select each entry. And check buttons. And then if we look at format character and we have the usual notebook multiple tabs color selectors all functioning under GTK4. Over here or drop down menus custom widgets can be interacted with and drop downs also working. The famous double decker notebooks also functioning as well can't fit them into the ordinary space available. The two level mode is also working fine. And if we look over in Impress and select that and check down here, we can see that we have functioning OpenGL slide transitions in preview mode at least. We don't have them working yet in full screen but there is enough functioning to show that it will work in the end. Typing works of course. Context menus work. Context menus now slide like this. So what has changed in GTK4 from GTK3? Uh, the first obvious thing is how events are managed has changed. Uh, in GTK3 to get mouse and keyboard events and so on, you can connect directly to the GTK widget and connect to the signals such as the key press event, key release event and so on. Now to do that you have to create an event controller for the type of event you're looking for, in this case uh, key events. You add that controller to the widget and then connect to the uh, key press key release events at the controller level. Uh, this has knock-on effects to other parts of the API as well so things like input methods and whatnot are all correspondingly changed to be uh, to work with controllers instead. This makes a lot of things actually more simple from our perspective. Uh, that GTK event itself is now opaque and you can't uh, pull out with individual members either some accessors have been added or in many of the cases the required data that we need appears as arguments to the controller callbacks. All of this is relatively straightforward from a LibreOffice perspective. Cut and paste. Well the first simple thing is that GTK clipboard has basically been renamed to GDK clipboard. Uh, the way we want to operate with the clipboard is that we just want to get the formats that are available in the clipboard uh, and their MIME types and then we just want to get the raw data of that and afterwards we do the conversion ourselves into our own internal formats or vice versa from our own external formats we put them into the clipboard and we just want to have that view of things. 
the first change in GDK4 is that there's now an API available to let us know that we are pasting from ourselves. Uh, GDK Clipper is local. That's convenient and can replace a uh, horrible hack that we're using in the GDK3 version. So that's a positive. In the GDK3 version, it used to be that formats were identified by GDK atoms, and we got uh, the MIME type that of that format by calling GDK atom name to get that, and then we would call GDK clipboard wait for contents to get the data synchronously and convert the data returned from that to the various formats that we use internally. Uh, fairly straightforward from our perspective. It's more complicated now with GDK4. We can use GDK clipboard get formats and we have the ability to call GDK content formats get MIME types and that to get the MIME types that we want. So that's more straightforward than the previous mechanism. But there's only a synchronous mechanism to get the data now. You have to call GDK clipboard read a sync and then a whole set of callbacks are, are triggered by that and you're given a GTK input stream to read the data from and you read a chunk of data and then you uh, return back uh, to request it to read the next chunk and eventually it will arrive back with the final chunk and at which point you have all the data that you need from the clipboard um, so it's a, a more roundabout mechanism from our perspective it basically was already doing something very similar to that but it was hidden behind the GTK clipboard wait for contents was hiding a lot of this complexity for us so basically we replaced that and we have to shoehorn these new asynchronous APIs into the LibreOffice view of how the clipboard works so we end up spinning the main loop during cut and place until eventually um, uh, the pace completes and we have the full amount of data that we were requesting from the clipboard. Drag and drop is uh, strongly related to cut and paste uh, so when it comes to management of the data that we get from drag and drop or we reuse in drag and drop we can effectively reuse the same code that we did for cut and paste. The GTK3 event driven drag and drop has now been replaced by GTK4's controller driven drag and drop. Uh, the changes to this versus the other controller conversion as shown in the event slide is, is much more extensive but for the most part uh, there are equivalent calls in the GDK4 than there was in GDK3 and it's just a matter of puzzling out which one uh, maps to which. Uh, what changes is in launching a drag and drop the GDK drive begin now takes a GDK content provider argument and that describes what data the drag and drop will provide and then will write that data when requested. So to make all this work in LibreOffice we have to implement our own GDK content provider and that then translates the LibreOffice view, the data, the GDK's view. Drawing. The changes in drawing. Uh, the changes in drawing are uh, the most extensive changes uh, versus all the other ones. Uh, GDK3 uh, was previously possible to connect to the draw signal in a custom GDK widget. You get back a, a Cairo context and we just blit our backing surface to that and GTK will have clipped that destination surface to the areas that have been marked as invalid. Uh, when we know that part of our backing surface has changed, we are tracking the damaged area and we just tell GTK3 uh, with that GTK widget queue draw area what areas are now invalid. This is all changed in GTK4, but there still exists uh, some routes to reuse our existing Cairo based drawing mechanisms to get something working straight away under GTK4 without having to investigate too deeply the new mechanisms of doing things. So to make all that work I decided to use a GTK drawing area for our custom drawing instead. This is how it looks in GTK3. Uh, just for reference at the top you have your menu bar which is a native GTK menu bar and you can see in the GTK inspector window which I've placed on top there that you have a top level GTK window and then you have a grid and then that contains two members. The first member is, is that menu bar. And then uh, we have the GTK event box. And that's the event box that we listen to for in GTK3 for all of our mouse events and other uh, keyboards events, etc. Inside that, then, we have this custom widget, this OOO fixed widget. Uh, that's the widget that we draw to. And we draw to that by listening to the draw signal in the previous slide. We can also host native elements uh, like the sidebar widgets. We can host them directly in that uh, fixed widget. 
in GTK4, as I said earlier, we have now changed to drawing to the GTK3 drawing area. Uh, GTK fix still remains, but now we've placed two of them inside an overlay. So what we have is a drawing area, GTK drawing area that fills the entire window. And then we use the overlay to float that GTK fixed up on top of it, which means that we can still continue to put our sidebar widgets into the GTK fixed and have them up on top of the drawing area um, for positioning purposes. Side effects of uh, the changes in GTK4 is that there is no longer uh, the queue drawing area, only the ability to call the full GTK widget queue. So only that remains left to trigger the redraw. And on the redraw, we're blitting our entire backing surface on every redraw. So on every cursor uh, blink, the whole thing is, is blitted again. This all this all works, uh, and it feels fine in practice performance-wise, but in the long run, we, we may need to rethink on that one. The other part of the drawing changes, from our perspective, our drawing changes, is that GDK's foreign drawing API is removed so there is no longer a simple route to render our ECL widgets to look like they are GTK widgets. Where we're using GTK widgets, this isn't an issue, but some of the remaining ECL user interface elements, like the application scroll bars uh, in GTK4, revert back to their built-in original VCL look, which you may have seen in the demo earlier. User interface descriptions. In GTK4, the widget inheritance hierarchy has changed. So previously, a GTK spin button inherited from GTK entry. So GTK entry properties could be used in GTK spin buttons as well. But now in 4, it inherits directly from GTK widget. Uh, other changes are that the generic container API has been removed in favor of specific APIs for every container. So GTK box and GTK grid have their own APIs for adding and removing children and the generic API GTK container add and remove doesn't exist in GTK4 anymore. So the user interface file format for GTK4 has correspondingly changed and it's an error to load properties in GTK4 that, that were removed and this can happen as in the case of GTK spin button where the property used to exist but no longer exists. There's a whole set of other changes as well. Seeing as we're not planning to change over to solely GTK4 uh, we need some sort of uh, interim mechanism to continue to support both versions. So we manage this in two parts. Uh, first is basically after the part of the GTK3 migration guide, the preparation in GTK3 is to make the changes there that are recommended for GTK3 applications in advance of becoming GTK4 applications. And these are applied to the user interface files in, in Git, so these are statically done. So this script, the bin UI rules enforcer, it rewrites our user address files to remove properties and elements that have been deprecated or contraindicated already in GDK3. For the most part, uh, the properties appear to be accidental properties. Maybe somebody fat fingered something or accidentally used the scroll wheel while hovering over the panel in Glade. So you get cases of where that double buffered property is set to something, which is not something that we ever want to do. Uh, or perhaps that a tracked visited links property has been toggled on in a GDK label, mostly meaningless accidental changes. And uh, that's the static part of things. Dynamically, then, uh, when we take these GDK3 UI files at runtime, we runtime convert them to the GDK4 equivalent properties and um, layout. Uh, this is conceptually similar to the GDK4 builder tool that comes with GDK4, uh, except that the builder tool. Uh, will only give you a kind of a template from which you have to make your final changes manually. The scope of possibilities of what you get in a generic UI file are, are too broad really to make a perfect conversion. But in our case, uh, we can take advantage of the fact that we have a, a uniform nature of our UIs, so they're all basically following the same pattern. And we can use the initial uh, static script to find and identify and fix up any of the cases where there's uh, some confusion as what the conversion should be like and force certain rules there so we continue to have a, a legal GTK3 version that we can convert automatically to create functional GTK4 UI versions um, at runtime. GTK image GTK picture. 
in GDK3 you have a single class GDK image. In GDK4 this has been split effectively into two separate things. GDK image which is a fixed ratio uh, widget uh, typically used for rendering icons and then you have a GDK picture which is less constrained. Uh, we have to basically decide uh, at load time, at runtime, what type of uh, destination GDK4 widget does a source GDK3 image have to be converted to. So if we can see that it's loading an icon, then it's a GDK image, which is the typical case. And then if we see that it's doing something different, such as the help about uh, case, then we have to convert to GDK picture. That adds a little bit of complexity to the conversion process. Uh, another changes related to that is that you can't create either of them from a Cairo surface anymore, but we continue in our GDK fort to keep our virtual devices to be backed by a Cairo surface, and we often want to create an image uh, from one of those. Uh, the argument they take now instead is a GDK paintable, uh, so I've bridged that gap with a simple implementation of one of those GDK paintables called a uh, surface paintable uh, that can, it then uses this GTK snapshot append Cairo to append on the uh, snapshot of a Cairo surface to those widgets so we can continue to use our virtual devices with the replacements in GTK4. So that covers all the things that work or can be made to work with a little bit more effort. There's a whole set of other things that I haven't really investigated closely yet. So for example, GDK has split top levels into standalone application windows and pop-up windows. And I've made no effort to do anything with pop-up windows yet. So where GDK itself manages them directly, such as in the menu bar or pop-up menus, then they work perfectly fine. But for something like the VCL toolbar, that kind of drop-downs, they, they don't work at all yet. Accessibility has also changed pretty radically in GDK4. Uh, I've made no effort to uh, look into that deeply yet, so I just stripped it out of the that user address files when they're dynamically converted from 3 to 4, and there's no code yet to bridge our existing accessibility implementation with the uh, GDK4 one. GDK threads set local uh, functions is also gone from GDK4, so so the mutex is no longer automatically acquired and released uh, by GDK. Um, I haven't really paid much attention to that yet. It doesn't make much of a difference when you're just using it directly as a user. Uh, some of the other toolkits have a similar problem, so we can adopt the same solution used there uh, for the GDK4 one if necessary. Uh, the other side of things then, GDK4 comes with built-in video support with GTK media file, which looks quite exciting, but nothing is making use of that yet. But it does look like it should be possible to uh, replace our direct use of tree streamer with uh, GTK media uh, file instead, which would give us maybe more flexibility and hopefully a kind of a smoother, more integrated approach with the rest of the interface. So yeah, that's where we are. Um, GTK4 port exists. Yes. Uh, a, lot a lot of it works, works. a lot of it doesn't, doesn't work, but it's clear for the most part what needs to be done to get those parts working. And there are a few unknowns, but on the balance it looks very, very plausible uh, that you need to get uh, will be successful. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Colin. Are there any questions? I do not see any questions in the um, chat room. Colin, perhaps you have something to add. Uh, I need to add. Um, yeah, uh, I suppose uh, it's just worth mentioning as well that uh, as far as I can tell, all of the dialogues are working. So it's not the case that I was like skipping parts that don't work. Um, I know that there is a few cases uh, that aren't working 100%, but for the most part, we're talking about 95% of the user interface seems to be functioning fine. Uh, full screen isn't really a, a major issue as far as I can see. Uh, the one thing that is outstanding and most, most difficult is probably those pop-ups and the lack of foreign drawing. And it might be an easier in the long run to just continue the existing welding stuff to end up just using a, a GTK4 scroll bars directly rather than spending any effort um, to 
in relation to that now missing foreign drawing. So that's probably also the approach I'm considering for those pop-ups. So the reason I haven't investigated it is because I'm thinking about um, avoiding the need for it entirely if possible. Yeah. Uh Thank you. So Cisco is asking, uh, what was harder, the migration from GTK2 to GTK3 or from GTK3 to GTK4? Uh, for us, the migration from 2 to 3 was more difficult because when we did our GTK2 port, we knew that GTK, GTK2 was uh, backed by X. So we continued to use all of our old X-based stuff whenever we ran into the sand with the GTK2 port. So when we went from two to three, we really had to do all the work we should have done uh, when we moved to two in the first place. So we had accumulated a, a large backlog of, of, of problems there, which meant that when GDK3 which could run under Wayland existed, then, then half of that stuff just, just suddenly failed to work. So two to three is more difficult to get up and running to see anything on screen at all than it was from three to four to get something visible that you can motivate yourself to continue working from three to four was far easier. Though it does remain to be seen whether or not migration fully to the approved way of doing things for, for rendering a GTK4, that might turn out to be more effort. But clearly, as you can see, you can see something straight away. So uh, that was much easier three to four than two to three. Okay, thanks. Yeah, as... Um... They are coming in a lot of uh, praise for your work. Uh, Nicolas saying, Carlan, I raise a beer for you for the awesome GTK4 work. Thanks a lot. Um, Raphael is saying, GTK4 dialogues looks great, nice work. Even Candy is uh, impressive of the stuff you have mentioned. And Jemux. Um, I guess for the Zola Mutex stuff, you can go the same way than all other platforms, just moving all the GUI stuff to a main thread. It's probably faster too. Question? No, this. Um, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I, that's what. Well, yeah, I feel pretty much the same way that it's probably easier not to try and fight the tide uh, and just accept that this is the way it is. And seeing as other toolkits do the same thing. Um, follow the same approach and indeed dispatch onto the main thread if in the edge case something happens and not in the main thread in the first place which is fairly rare from perspective of somebody just using it normally you get cases like that in, in the extensions dialogue i think is one place where it comes up where stuff is done not in the main thread so yeah that's probably uh, the right way to go yeah hossein also is uh, praising your work and a question, do you know if the next uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise uh, Linux version 9 will be shipped with GTK4 and it will be used for LibreOffice in it? No, no, it, 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 LibreOffice will, will not be using GTK4 by default uh, this year, at least anyway, uh, because it just isn't going to be ready and it's not intended to be ready. 